da 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 You guys pretty excited about uh, you know Game of Thrones? Uh, a TV talk here. Watch a little Daredevil on Netflix. I don't know. I guess we could talk about some games too if you want. Hey, hey. Oh, I guess <laughs> we, 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 we can talk about a little bit of TV. I started watching Daredevil on Netflix this morning. Yeah. And I, God, it is so so good. I'm and, enjoying it too. I was oh watching it with the kids today. I was like almost t- going to tell the kids to leave the room. It's pretty graphic. Wow, I know. I couldn't Whoa. believe it. Uh, All right, so this is the Beastly Thought Show. <laughs> hey, how you doing, everybody? <laughs> After uh, extended break, we are back. We took the week off for Easter. We are back. We got Robbie here. Hey, Robbie. Hey, guys. Good to see you. How you doing? Good. We got Beastly Gamer here. How you doing, Beastly? Well, it's happening, man. I've been waiting to get back in here and get in the show. Feeling good. Yeah, I'm feeling good, too. I'm excited for this show. We got some pretty big news. I want to ask you guys what you've been playing first, though. Well, Robbie, you want to start it off? What have you been playing this week? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I am really surprised to be saying this. I actually got GTA Five on the Xbox One to play this with my friends. I have been playing so much GTA Online. Like, I I love it. I can't believe I've never gotten into GTA Online before. Like, I am having a blast with it. I was playing it all night last night. Like, mm-hmm. I am just having so much damn fun doing this. You the got it on the Xbox One, you said? Yeah, because... Um, my best friend Tyson had it on there too, and he convinced me to buy it. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'll just buy it again, whatever. Yeah, and it's yeah. so worth it. I am in love with that game. I've gotten so invested in it, and now I'm totally back into Grand Theft Auto, and I love it. Have you tried out the Stunters versus Snipers? Uh, no, I haven't tried that playlist yet. So my raid team on Destiny, uh, they'll often play that, and they talk about it like it's it's basically crack. Like, it's the most fun you can have with a video game. I, I'm almost tempted to buy the game just to try out this game mode because of what they say about it, but I'll have to ask them more about it. Yeah. Anything else you've been playing? Um, Not really. Well, actually, I've been playing... Uh, I jumped into Advanced Warfare a little bit this week just to see how I was feeling about it, and I was like, you know what? This game's fun, but I was kind of... After no, a couple it's actually like, not that much fun. <laughs> okay, Briar, whatever. You know what? I find the game is still fun at times, though, so I enjoy it. All right. Beastly, what have you been up to? Well, I, a majority of my week was spent playing Bloodborne, uh, and uh, for the last two weeks I've been into that game. I actually beat it this morning. I got the uh, the second ending, and uh, I have so much to say about this game, but probably not on today's show. It's one of the best games I've played in a long time. It's definitely my favorite game of the year. Do you uh, think this is a reason, this game alone, do you think it's a reason to buy a PlayStation 4? I know people who bought PlayStation 4 just for this. Yeah. It's de- if, you're, if you like the Soul series and you like games in that ilk, uh, it's actually gotten Kate to play Dark Souls. She wants to go back and play them. Uh-huh. Uh, the Dark Souls 2 just got re-released on PlayStation 4. Yeah, I think yep. I want to go ahead and pick that one up. If it feels anything like this, I think it'll be a definite... It It'll be worth picking up. <laughs> I, I, I think it's a little bit slower. I think that's the, the issue that a lot of uh, adventure gamers had with the game, that it was a little uh, too lethargic. But this game felt so good, and the mechanic of having a firearm and a blade or a main weapon worked so well. Yeah. And uh, there isn't a whole lot of story, but the story that you get somehow feels adequate. I got the second ending today, and I felt okay with it, even, even knowing that the third ending is really the true ending. And so I went back into it a little bit this morning in game plus mode, and I realized I'm level 105, and I was kicking these guys' ass again. So I might end up going through the game again because it pulls you in so much. Do you have you to finish been... the game twice to get the best ending? You can actually get the best ending uh, the first time. First. If you... yeah. There are things that you have to pick up. Uh, there's four pieces of an umbilical, uh, umbilical cord you have to pick up. Mm-hmm. And I, only, I only had one. But the the last guy, Jer, I think his name is German. Have you played this game, Robbie? Well, Bloodborne? Yeah, have you played it? I've, yeah, I've played plenty of Bloodborne. I thought we were did, talking about that like a couple weeks ago. Did, did you beat the game? <laughs> no, I'm on the uh, I'm on Vicar Amelia, and I kind of stopped playing. No, okay. I haven't given up. I've just kind of taken a there, break right now. There, so. there is one guy at the very end of the game. His name is German. He's the very first hunter, and he was the hardest thing I've ever played in that game. He was so hard. And a lot of the bosses that I had issues with in the game, my wife would jump in and we'd tackle them together. But uh, she ended up opting out of fighting the boss, so she had to leave and I had to take him on myself. But it's a, a very, very fun game. Also, this earlier today I played some Advanced Warfare. Hey, Robbie. And <laughs> I got I to gotta say uh, the same thing you said. I did have a lot of fun playing it. 
Kate and I probably played 15 games, and then I played some Destiny as well right before the show. So it's been a pretty uh, Bloodborne-centric week. I've enjoyed that, and I'm looking forward to playing some other stuff now that I had the game beat. What about you, Brian? What have you been playing this week? So I I also have been playing some Bloodborne and still really enjoying that game. I'm I'm still pretty early in that game because I put so much time every week into Destiny. And actually this week uh, I didn't get to play much games at all. Uh, today I was playing some Destiny. I still have one of my Nightfalls to complete for the week. I do my I do the Nightfall strike on all three of my characters, and I haven't done out my Hunter yet. So me and the kids were sitting in front of the TV. I was trying to get the Nightfall strike done. Uh, solo, and man, I kept failing for the most ridiculous reasons over and over. The last time I failed, uh, I was on the last boss, uh, Valis Tuark. Uh, his health was about three quarters gone, right? I jump up with my uh, Galahorn to shoot him in the face. Uh, I hit my head on the on the roof above me, and that makes me go back down too fast, and I end up shooting the wall right in front of me with a Galahorn. <laughs> <laughs> and go right back to orbit. <laughs> how, how much time did you put in uh, before you got? Before, it's a long yeah. strike. That's a long strike because you gotta you gotta get through uh, like the three. Uh, I think they're generals or admirals or whoever. Like they're and they're three kind of like mini bosses. Then you gotta fight a tank, uh, and then you gotta kind of get to the boss. And then the boss has so much health that it, it's a good, I don't know, it feels like a good 20-minute fight when you're doing it solo. And the kids are into it. They've never seen me complete it. So we were going through it, going through it. And then to fail like that, I, we couldn't do anything but laugh. It was kind of funny. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I heard that you weren't feeling uh, too well this week, and I'm oh, happy man, to hear that. I got a, it, it's like a flu, right? But it didn't, it never got like the congestion or like the, like the, the chesty kind of thing, but it just wiped me out at the beginning of the week. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, when, Monday through Wednesday, you were down. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're happy to have you back in Briar Rabbit form. It's good yeah, it's good to be back. I got, I got <laughs> back in fine form, too, because uh, if you guys don't know, we do the Planet Destiny podcast over at uh, Destiny, planetdestiny.com. And uh, when I got back, one of the co-hosts of the Planet Destiny podcast told me, hey, Guess who's going to be on the podcast this week? The community Deej. manager over at uh, over at Bungie. So that was awesome. Deej was there. Yeah. So it was that actually, is... you know, like the week started off really, really shitty and got really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, glad to hear everything turned out uh, well in the end, though. I took a listen to that podcast. You guys did a phenomenal job. I loved hearing what Deej had to say about the community feedback and how it's always shaping destiny and how he has, like, that one monitor just for his Twitter feed, too. I was yeah, like, oh, yeah. man, that's dedication. That's awesome. Yeah, he's a cool guy. He's got a tough job, you know, like trying to balance, you know, what the community wants and what, like, you know, the de developers are willing to share with the community. That's got to be tough, right? He's got to always be fighting, like, all these secrets that he's holding on to but he can't share with anybody. And all these people, like, asking him to share, asking him to share. It's got to be a tough job. Uh, you know, of course, he's going to see a lot of complaints about the game, but I think mostly complaints about Destiny come from a place of, like, love for the game. You know, people love this game, and they want better. They want more of it, and they want better things for it. So They're passionate about it. They're very right. passionate. Yeah. So, I mean, he's a cool guy. I mean, I was really impressed with him. Yeah, I, I got to say, uh, I haven't seen a game in a long time that had this much of a tail. Uh, oh, yeah. and, and, and so strong. It's like it still feels like the game just came out because so many people are still in it every single day and not wavering. People bounce off and play a game here and there, but they for the for the most part of the fans of Destiny, they jump right back into the world and yeah. I, it's kind of like becoming its own World of Warcraft or something. It's like so many people are enjoying it, and that's just not what you see in the console space. Right, and then yeah. we've got uh, you know new DLC that's just right around the corner, so that's going to be great too. Yeah. Or it, I mean, it'll be fun to see what it, what it's like. I mean, we don't know that it's going to be great, but... Well, well, we fingers is. crossed, fingers yeah, crossed. Yeah. We'll hope. Yeah. All right, so we had a pretty uh, pretty decent week of news this week. Robbie, you want to get us started? All right, I think I'm just going to jump right into the biggest news by far this week. So there was a teaser that went out a couple days ago. Um, there have been a lot of teases up until this point on Snapchat, teasing towards the next Call of Duty game coming out this year. 
Call of Duty Black Ops 3 has been officially announced in the teaser because you could see the little one norm, Roman numeral at the end. It was one and then went to two Coming and then two, then three. Mm-hmm. Full reveal is coming April 26, 2015, and we have a lot to talk about here because there's been so many things that have leaked out about this game and a lot of details to talk about. So I've got I've got conflicting opinions about this, like in my own head. Like I can't decide what I... You know, first of all, the trailer itself didn't really share much. You know, it was a little bit of a, a little bit of kind of dialogue that we've heard in old games, and probably some new dialogue that's going to be from the new game. There wasn't a the whole lot. Mason. Yeah, it was. There wasn't a whole lot in the trailer. The biggest news, I think, was the confirmation that it was Black Ops Three in that World at War Two, which you know people were holding out hope. Some people were holding out hope for World at War Two, but a lot of people are big fans of the Black Ops series, and yeah. I, frankly, I think it would have been silly for Treyarch to not keep that going. Uh, what do you guys think? Are you happy about Black Ops 3? Would you rather see World at War 2? I think I'm really happy to see a Black Ops 3. Um, I know a lot of people are bummed out that this is going to be another futuristic Call of Duty, but I think it's going to be like Black Ops 2. You remember how there would be times where you're in 2025 and then you go back to uh, the Vietnam War and stuff like that and the Cold yeah. War. I think... Black Ops 3 is going to be a little further into the future, and you're going to go back to World War II, and you're going to see these events happen that shapes what happens in the future. Like, we're going to go back to the future and then see how those events unfold and what happens in the storyline and see how technology has evolved. Really, like, basically like advanced warfare, maybe a little further into the future, but then you see some flashbacks to the past that all kind of link together. I'm super excited about it. I personally like the older weaponry better than the futuristic weaponry. For some reason, I have more fun when I see a gun like an M60 that I've seen in countless Rambo movies or or Terminator movies, you know, like stuff like that. Like, it just, for some reason, it gives me more of a satisfying feel than like a brand new experimental gun that, you know, nobody's ever heard of. Like a lot of the guns in Advanced Warfare, they just look like they're made up out of thin air, you know, and they don't, they don't have that kind of visceral rush that, you know, using a M16 or a uh, Kalashnikov or something like that, you know, they don't they don't have that visceral feel. So I'd like to see in Black Ops 3 some of these weapons that we're more familiar with, you know, back. Because I, I didn't really dig all these, like, kind of... Laser you know, guns? Yeah, made-up shit in advanced warfare. But the potential yeah. with a futuristic game is that you have, like... Basically, Unlimited it's events that haven't happened yet. You have technology that hasn't been developed yet, so you can basically make anything you want out of that. They can do whatever they want because the future has not been folded yet. They right. can show their envision of the future, what they think well, it's going to look like, the technology well, we're going to have. So. What, what they did with Black Ops 2, from my recollection, is they built on existing technology and weapons, mm-hmm. and then yeah. they pretty much made a hypothesis on what they thought the future of that weapon might be, and then they put it into the game. So hopefully they don't veer off too far to the right or the left and keep it based on possible reality. Of course, anything's possible, but let me just say this. Black Ops 3, to me, is really good news, considering I thought I would love Advanced Warfare, and I didn't. Uh, you know, when the game first came out, there was a lot of hype around it, and I was excited to play it, but after a while I felt like it wasn't really what I was used to, and it didn't feel the same, and I felt like there, there was just so much open, expansive area for you to be flanked, and it just didn't feel like you could ever get the upper hand. Black Ops 2 was the first Call of Duty game that I ever invested 100% of my gaming time into. I played uh, Modern Warfare 2. That was the, ver- the very first one I ever played. Then I played 3, and then I went straight to Black Ops 2. I, I skipped Black Ops 1 because I wasn't playing it at the time. But Black Ops 2, when it came out, it was my favorite shooter of all time. And for my recollection, for the time that I put into that game, it still is my favorite Call of Duty game because of how much time I put into it. Uh, you know, when, when Modern Warfare 2, I was playing that, I was playing lots of other stuff. I just wanted to see what it was like. But when Black Ops 2 came in, I put 100% of my time in on that game. My wife put 100% of time on that game, and we fell in love with it. So I'm really happy to see that franchise coming back. And hopefully these Advanced Warfare and... and uh, Black Ops 3, the universes don't don't mesh because I don't think a Black Ops world will work really well with this uh, exo suit or exo movement. I, I really want what Black Ops 2 was just to evolve and and for them to cultivate that stew and make that better for us versus reaching out and trying to 
pull from Advanced Warfare. At first, I thought it would be great, but after playing it and seeing the way that they de- developed it and the way that the stages are made, I just don't think that that's going to be a good Call of Duty uh, recipe in the future. The My problem with Advanced Warfare is it just feels like chaos all the time. Like, yeah. I never feel like my brain is giving me an advantage in Call of Duty, in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. The the best players are going to be the fa- the people with the fastest twitch reflexes in that game. Because there's no flow to those maps. You know, people could be coming from any direction at mm-hmm. any time. And you know, it just to me it like almost right off the bat I was kind of like this doesn't even feel like Call of Duty to me. I'm what I'm hoping for with Black Ops 3 is another Call of Duty game. You know, a yeah. game that feels like Call of Duty. I hope that they learn something from uh, the hit detection and the the way the netcode worked in Ghost. I hope they incorporate some of that into Black Ops. Because uh, Black Ops 2, if you'll remember, both of those things sucked pretty hard. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, and Ghost, I mean, really improved on that. You say what you will about Ghost the game. It had an amazing netcode. The netcode was spot on, and the hit detection was... The best it's ever been. Yeah. So if they could just pull that straight out of there, you know, uh, it also, in my opinion, looked better than Advanced Warfare. Ghosts on PlayStation 4 looks better than Advanced Warfare on the PlayStation 4. Uh, so it was surprising to me to see them take a step back like that. Um, so I'd like to see Black Ops 3 be a step forward as far as netcode goes, as far as gameplay goes. Uh, but I, I'm ready to leave that exo jumping and kind of three dimensional gameplay behind. And I, I think mean, this is where the future of Call of Duty rests, right? Like, can where does Treyarch go with this? Because a lot of the community says we don't want exos, we don't want movement in Black Ops Three, but it was sort of like an evolution with Advanced Warfare. Now maybe Treyarch could do their own type of movement. Maybe it would be like a jetpack, or they'd have some sort of cybernetic robot abilities. I don't know what it's going to be, but I, I feel heard like all running get rumored. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, wall running could be a possibility. You just don't know. Like, I feel like... I don't feel like they can't have a new type of movement. They have to do something similar to the exosuit. They can't go back. I feel like they're going to have to find a way to implement it that makes it just more fun and fair. And it just it feels natural compared to Advanced Warfare where it's just so chaotic. They're going to have to make maybe bigger maps or something. I don't know well, what the solution to that is, but well, the track we trust. When you take into account the games like Titanfall felt good in in the multiplayer arena and Advanced Warfare doesn't because of the level design. That's really what it is. Yeah. The level design in Advanced Warfare does not suit that type of movement. They just made level on top of level in open areas and tunnels, and you can pretty much be anywhere. They didn't really think of the way the the players... The maps are too small for how fast the players move. They really are, yeah. I mean, that game really could have been a huge success if they had rethought their level design, I believe. I just think that the way those maps were thought up, the way they were mocked up, just didn't suit that movement well enough. And they could have learned something from Titanfall. Titanfall's the, the way that you can control wall jump parkour, double jump, it all seems to work really well in that game. And I, I attribute a lot of that to the level design because you actually feel like you can get an advantage in that game. You can kind of see where you're going, who's coming. In Advanced Warfare, you really never have that moment that you know you're safe. It, it, every, anywhere you go in Advanced Warfare, it feels like there's 18 different sight lines that could anybody could come from at any point in time. And the way they place some of the flags is like, oh, Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it's just <laughs> a headache. <laughs> Trying to cover all those sight lines, there's no way you could possibly do it. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'd be okay if they put in exosuits but had more traditional Call of Duty-style maps, stuff like you'd see in Black Ops 2 or in Black Ops 1, if they pulled back on the player speed a little bit, made it more similar to what it was like in Black Ops 2, uh, but those exosuits, like, they just helped you get up to like a window or helped you get up to a place that you couldn't normally get to, but you couldn't just kind of boost across the map continuously. That's, I think, it's hard to design for that. I, I don't know. Titanfall, I think, did a good job of designing for that. They had other issues. But Titanfall is not Call of Duty. You know, what do you want? Do you want to... Do you want a Titanfall-type game, or do you want a Call of Duty-type game? I'd rather have another Call of Duty. You know, I miss Call of Duty. I haven't played Call of Duty in a long time at this point. That's true, too, because you look at the name of Call of Duty, they have to stick to those fundamentals. Like, they can't go 
too far off of what Call of Duty is and what people have known to know the franchise as being. Like, you need this fast-paced Twitch shooter, and if they go much further away, will it even be a Call of Duty game anymore? Like, that's yeah. a question. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. They have three developers now, so maybe they just change it up every year. Maybe they leave it to Infinity War to make that more standard, old-school Call of Duty that you remember from Modern Warfare 2. Maybe they leave it to Treyarch to do kind of these these faster-paced Call of Duties uh, with shitty hit detection. And maybe they leave it to Sledgehammer to kind of just do whatever the hell you want. Just make something that has the Call of Duty name on it but isn't necessarily doesn't necessarily feel like a Call of Duty game. I feel like no matter what, though, Black Ops 3 is definitely going to have some sort of EXO movement. There's going to be some sort of boosting or like a jetpack or something. I feel like there will be some sort of movement that's outside of the traditional movement yeah. we've seen in Call of Duty up until Advanced Warfare. Like, there's no I, way they're not going to do that. I personally wouldn't want them to go as far as, as they've gone with Advanced Warfare. I think something that would be reasonable that traditional Call of Duty fans can get behind as well as people who've adopted this new movement would be a sprint. Maybe a sprint button that gives you 10 seconds of extra momentum or, you know, a higher jump or something like that. You know, the ability to actually jump on the map to jump faster or higher, but all the exosuit stuff, the double jump straight back forward, it's just its so chaotic. I think that if they were to do anything for the Black Ops name, maybe a sprint button. That, that would be just enough for me. Do you guys think it's a possibility that we could see a 16 versus 16 player Call of Duty? Because that's actually one of the rumors that came out about Black Ops 3 before it was officially announced that um, one of the crazy rumors was it was going to be 16 on 16 and the maps are going to be much larger. Do you think they'd go towards that direction? I think they could do that uh, on the new consoles. I think if they decide to uh, develop the game with the new consoles in mind, then yes, that's a possibility. But if if it's, again, a kind of cross-platform development, then no, they're they're never going to be able to make that happen on the Xbox 360 and the PS3. Do you guys think uh, Black Ops 3 is going to come to the last gen? I sure hope it's not, because it's going to hold back the I game a lot. Will. Yeah. You think it will, Brian? I didn't hear yeah, you. Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, these new consoles are selling so fast, but I mean, there's still this huge install base for the Xbox 360 and the PS3 that it's as a as a developer, you can't really ignore that. You know, like a lot of people haven't made that transition yet. Um, maybe what at this point what we start seeing is developers, you know, developing the game for the PS4 and the Xbox One. And then have it like subcontracting out a port it out, yeah. A port for the Xbox 360 and the PS3. I could see that starting to happen. Uh, so basically, the Xbox 360 and the PS3 you get like a lesser version. Like, yeah. like Titanfall. Well, Titanfall was actually pretty close. Yeah, it was. It, it looked pretty good too for the 360. Um, but I don't know. I if if it were if it were my money, if I was developing. Uh, Black Ops 3, I'd be like, yeah, you better develop it for the Xbox 360 and the PS3. There's still, you know, <laughs> a lot of people buying games for that. Yeah, well, there's 160 million units out there, so yeah, that's a lot of money to be left on the table, but I think ultimately, within the next two or three years, developers are definitely going to step away. I-, I wish, personally, that they would step away. You see uh, last-gen versions versus current-gen now, games like Shadows of Mordor, there's a huge difference, you know? Yeah. And um, I think that developing a game with the future in mind versus being tethered to the past is always better for the gamer. And uh, I've talked to people on my channel who who are frustrated with that statement. They're like, well, what about us? And I'm like, well, if you don't have it now, one day you will. You know, don't, don't stay stagnant. Don't think that you'll only have a PS3 or an Xbox 360 forever. One day the PS4 will be 200 bucks. You know, it's just a little bit of time. But if developers continue to, to tether... New games to old old hardware, we're always going to get subpar results, if you ask me. And that's a problem, too, because look at all these people who are buying these new consoles. They expect these new, better it's games. Me. They expect these next-gen experiences, and if you're tethered to the last-gen, they're not getting that, and it's just holding back everyone as a whole, and that's kind of unfair to the people who are on this new gen saying, hey, where's my new generation experiences? I can play this on my PS3 and Xbox 360, which are 10 years old. Why would I buy this new system? Why? Yeah. There's no point. Well, the yeah. thing is, with the, with the Xbox 360 and the PS3, the, the hardware is is pretty good. Like, back when I was a kid, Nintendo and Super Nintendo would have the exact same game. But you'd see a huge, Briar, you remember, there'd be a huge difference 
in the graphical well, they're quality. Oftentimes, they're developed by two different companies. Yeah, and, and when yeah. you see both different games, you'd be like, okay, I'll definitely get this version. Nowadays, it's a lot harder to tell. You really have to heavily scrutinize which is which because the PS3 and the Xbox 360 are still relatively powerful. You know? Check in the Forever Man, though, only came out on one console, and it was the best <laughs> one. Uh, you know, just, like, just like Aladdin. <laughs> no, yeah. Aladdin came out on both. Yeah, but it was much better on on Sega Genesis. Uh, you'd get a strong debate from a lot of people on that. There's no way. <laughs> I'm not I'm not versed on it, but I've heard I've heard debates rage about which version of Aladdin was better. Man, Disney, no, every Disney game, I swear, it killed on Sega Genesis. Every single Quack Shot, Aladdin. I know Aladdin looked like you're watching a cartoon. I couldn't believe it. It did. So, that was an amazing was, game. Um, yeah, they they really blew minds back then. So twenty years ago. Um, it, while we're talking about like kind of the consoles and moving to the next generation, it, it's funny because Destiny uh, just they recently told us about how they're going to increase the vault space, so you'll be able to carry more stuff or put more stuff in your vault. And when they were talking about that, they discussed how it's not a big problem on the Xbox One and the PS4, but on the 360 and PS3 you're actually going to lose functionality to incorporate this feature. You will no longer be able to kind of compare two weapons in your vault by mm. hitting the left trigger uh, on the 360 and the PS3 because of the the memory requirements. So, uh, you know, if with a difference so small as that, imagine what they could do in, like, level design or yeah. character design or AI if they weren't restricted by the 360 and the PS3. If they could just they could separate themselves... You know, and this goes for Destiny, this goes for COD, this goes for every game. You know, if they could just separate themselves from the older consoles and just develop with the new consoles in mind, I think we'd see some pretty stupendous stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can just uh, do so much more when you're not tethered to old hardware. Although Bloodborne, yeah. I think, could have run on a PS1. Uh, what the fuck is going on with that game? <laughs> Are you out of your frame mind? Rate. <laughs> that frame rate, though, come on. <laughs> The, the only not time I, I got I gotta defend this because this game is amazing. The only time I notice any real substantial frame rate dips is when my my wife and I would join together, and uh, we do that every now and then. And you notice it there, but when you're just playing, I really didn't notice too much of anything. And the game is beautiful. The game is gorgeous. Every time I walked it. over like any bridge, I don't know what it is about the bridges in that game, but they crush the frame rate. And it was like <laughs> there was one bridge. I think I talked about this on an earlier podcast, but. I had to walk by. It was early in the game, so I was walking past it like constantly. And every time I get a little bit nauseous because the frame rate would slow down so much. Be like chop, <laughs> chop, chop, chop. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> I haven't found it nearly that severe, but um, it can get a little. It can stutter at moments. It'll be like, uh, yeah, you know, it'll uh, be. Kind of... And I got a question. Uh, have you speaking of Bloodborne? Have you guys had the opportunity to play with anybody? Uh, Online co-op? No, I have not yet. No. Oh, you got to. Up to three people can play together, and uh, Kate and I will be looking for somebody else to play with. But it, it really adds a whole new dimension to the experience. And there's also something that they do in the game where people will invade your game. Yeah. And it, it happens at random times. Early, early on in the game, like between level 0 and 40, there's only specific times that this happens, but in the later levels in the game, there's this witch who will come into the, the world, and she'll ring this bell. And you have to find her and kill her because she's ringing a bell for someone who's trying to, invite, to invade your game. And oftentimes, you can hear it, especially with headphones on. You know you're getting close to her, so you're looking for a hidden area because <laughs> she's always in the hidden area. You kill her, and the person doesn't come. But there's oftentimes where a person will come. It'll say their name on your screen, and then all of a sudden, someone will come out with this big giant weapon, and you got to defend yourself. But it always works better if you have your wife with you. Uh, so, so you better tell Jan, Briar. You got to have and somebody. I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> there have been no. guys. I don't I, think it would help either, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> there was a guy who invaded my game two days ago, and uh, he had a really big weapon, and it was the scythe from the end of the game. I was like, wow, this guy's powerful. But Kate was standing next to me. He looked at us both and walked off the edge of the mat <laughs> and killed him. So he knew he wasn't going to win. So it's always good to have somebody with you. I love that game. Can't say enough good about it, guys. Shall we continue with the news? Tomb Raider yeah, news. Do it. Tomb Raider has sold 8.5 million units. This is the new the remake that was released 2013, I believe. And then it was re-released for PS4 
uh, at the beginning of 2014, and uh, including the PS4 and Xbox One release, they've sold 8.5 million units of Tomb Raider, making the Tomb Raider remake the number one selling Tomb Raider of all time. What do you guys think about that? Awesome. awesome. Yeah, I mean, like, out of left field, though, right? Like, all of a sudden we're hearing about Tomb Raider? (laughs) Yeah, random. (laughs) Well, the thing is, I think anyone who's working on this next Tomb Raider game will want that news out there, you know? That this game is, it, it's something. It means something. And Square Enix is behind it. You know, they want to push as much info as they can, uh, you know, out about this game. But, yeah, 8.5 million, that's that's not a small number. That's, nah. up there with the, that's up there with The Last of Us. I think PS3 numbers. That game so, is great, so I'm glad. You know, like, I really enjoyed my time with that game. And that's another game that I'll be buying for my Xbox One because it's coming to Xbox One first, and I really don't have a choice. So, let's do it. Yeah, Eight point five million. Yeah, that put a smile on my face when I heard when I heard the news. Like that's, that's good news for that game because it it deserves good sales. Yeah, it yeah, well, does. We're going from from up top on top of the mountain to the underdog. Is it true that well, it's a rumor. What do you guys think of this rumor that Call of Duty Black Ops Three may be ported to the Wii U? Tick tock, tick. Tock. <laughs> if it's getting ported to the Wii U, you can be damn sure it's going well, to the Xbox Three Sixty and the PS Three. Yeah, that's what kind of worried me about this. I'm like, oh, God, it's going to be held back by last gen. I'm like, please, no. But it's probably going to happen, which really sucks. I don't want that to happen, but what do you do? Well, Ghost didn't come out on the Wii U, so I don't know. Um, yeah, Advanced did. Warfare didn't. I think Ghost, oh, Ghost it, came out on the Wii U. Advanced yeah. Warfare didn't. Oh, okay, I knew yeah. it was one of them. Okay, Advanced Warfare yeah. didn't. So maybe they're dipping into that 10 million install base, and they want to see if any... Nintendo fans want to jump into Call of Duty. And you're right, Briar. If that game is ported, it'll definitely be on PS3 and 360. Oh, yeah. Which will make it just like the last two Call of Duty games. I mean, I'm trying to imagine the first Call of Duty that's next-gen only, or current-gen only, what that experience would really be like. You know, it's it's sort of sad. I mean, that's what one of the coolest things about Call of Duty 4 was, is that it was a next-gen at the time. Mm Mm-hmm. Game, you know, it and it looked amazing. It was incredible, you know. It just so to see advanced, to see Activision kind of take it so slowly, assuming that they're doing it this way, is it is a little bit sad. It'd be great to see Call of Duty pushing the way forward technology wise, but I don't know those dollar signs really. They pull you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that money, yeah. It's a lot to leave on the table. Well, I guess yeah. we'll only they're time. In a, they're in a bad spot too, because like if you think about, if you're the developer of Call of Duty, like the next Call of Duty game, there is so much pressure on you. You know, yeah. Call of Duty is the best-selling franchise in video games right now, but it's on a decline. And like, what do you do to like, you know, Bring what it do back you up. do with it? You know, we we just had Advanced Warfare came out. The reception has been awful. So obviously people don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you want? We we just had Ghost come out. That was, a, as far as I'm con- concerned, a return back to like Modern Warfare Three, Modern Warfare Two style of Call of Duty. People hated it. But what the fuck do you want? <laughs> the community can't decide when they get the same thing. They complain, but when they get something new, they're like, "Oh, we hate change." What do you want? <laughs> this is what sucks about I mean, Trevor. They're in such a terrible position right now. It's like, what do they do? I don't know. I'm not I don't sure. know, you know, like I, I would, I do not, I, I never have, and never will envy the developers of Call of Duty because they are in such a hard position to, and that, that's a lot of pressure from Activision, you know, whew, that's tough. Yeah. Jeez. And then I, mean, I remember when Sledgehammer was talking about Advanced Warfare, the whole idea seemed so seamless, and it would seem, it, it would work so well, and then when you actually well, get, the control was seamless. Yeah, but the game, oh god. They needed bigger maps. I, that was my main issue. It's just too chaotic. They needed just better designed maps. Yeah. You know, like the the level design was just not good. It did not flow. There was no predictability to it. They should just remake Modern Warfare 2, 3, and Black Ops 2 and put that on one disc and, and HD <laughs> and uh, put that on VS4 with reworked netcode and everybody would be fucking happy. Modern Warfare 2. I'd be happy Black for Ops. like a week, I bet, and then I'd never oh play it goodness. again. Oh my goodness. All that DLC. Yeah. I played the shit out of those games when they were new. Like I, I, 
<laughs> I know. That's how, that's how I met you, man. <laughs> do I really want to play it again, you know? Do Probably you not. That, do you think that yeah. that would actually sell, guys? If they Oh, really... it would sell. I would buy it. I just I wouldn't spend the kind of time I spent on a brand new Call of Duty, though, playing it. Mm. Yeah, but we may never have another Call of Duty that elicits that much time. That, that, I, yeah. that, that you actually spend that kind of time because they're trying to do what they're not... You, they're stepping out of their lane. They're trying to do everybody else's job. They're trying to be Battlefield. They're trying to be Titanfall instead of just continuing to master and, and hone the craft that they created. Because, to be honest, uh, Call of Duty, as far as multiplayer goes on consoles, they were like the father of it. You know, Call of Duty started it. And so I yeah. think if they focus on what made it good versus trying to reach into everybody else's pot, so they got double jumps, so they got huge maps, they've got destructible environments... Just continue with what made you successful, and uh, and see how that goes. Versus just evolve to and else. make the game better. Do what you know Ooh, another, and just improve it. Another great game, evolve. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> oh my god. I'm, yeah, I'm done. The thing that would make me happiest from a Call of Duty would just be awesome net code. You know, good hit detection, good level design. If there's exosuits, fine, but they've got to have level design that incorporates it better than Advanced Warfare does. Just do it right. Yeah, it can be really good. I'm sure it can be really good. They just got to implement that movement just in the right ways, and it'll be good. Yeah. Yep. All right, so the next little bit of news is only partly true, and I can I can vouch for this at this point. Sony is making good on misleading advertising refunds for the PlayStation Vita. Uh, if you had a PlayStation Vita and you bought it, around launch. I forget exactly when that date ended. Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, June 1st, 2012. Okay. Yeah. So if you, if you got your PS Vita around that time uh, or before, you would actually get a refund. And uh, they were sending refunds because they were basically saying that all Vitas were cross-compatible with PS3s. Like all your Vita games, you could stop playing them and play them straight on the PS3. A lot of lies were told during the advertisement uh, campaign of the Vita. And I know for sure because I got my early edition Vita, and Kate's early edition. But they you always the cellular one. Yeah, I I got the three the three G, uh, but I've never used it because it, it had AT and T, and I was like, why? But I still got it. <laughs> That's the one I have, and she has the same one. But they sent her a refund about a week and a half ago, or they they sent her an email. She filled it out, and uh, they they'd either give you twenty five dollars on PSN credit, a twenty five dollar check, or the fifty dollar a refund, which incorporates three games that most people fifty dollar refund. It's three old PS3 games yeah. that they they give you the download for. But they have not sent me my refund, and I'm the one who bought both systems. But, well, if um, you if they didn't email you, you can fill out a form. You can you can fill out the form yourself. So I got to do that too because I got my video at launch, so I can I'm applicable for this too. Yeah, well, she she tried to well she sent me the email that they sent her, but I was unable to fill it out because the emails are tethered, I guess tethered to the the receiving person, and I wasn't able to do it. So, it is what it is. I guess we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right. Ooh, maybe you can talk about this Witcher news, Robbie. I know you're you're really stoked for Witcher three. Absolutely, it's gonna be a huge game. So, uh, anyways, this week we got an announcement that two massive expansions, quote unquote, <laughs> have been announced for The Witcher Three. So, I don't remember what they're called, but the first one is gonna be like at least ten hours. It's gonna come out in October, I think they said, and then the next one is gonna come out early 2016. And the main, the big thing about this is, remember when you guys, remember when they were saying all the DLC was gonna be free and all that, and now they have these paid expansions. People are really, really mad about this. <laughs> And uh, I don't know. It's great to see some expansions, though. What do you guys think? Why are they mad about it? Are they, because are they, expansions they said we had all now? free DLC, but people assumed, assumed that would be the expansions, too. That's not true. There's no way that was going to be true. Well, have they gone on the record and said that uh, we lied and you're going to have to pay for this shit? It's going to cost money, of course. Well, they're big expansions. They're going to cost a decent amount. So. Well, they, they've been very vocal about uh, not charging for their DLC, and that's been one of the focal points of their development campaign. They've gone on the record repeatedly and said that they think it's unethical that developers make games and they you know, nickel and dime people, and they want to do it and do it absolutely for free. But this isn't nickel and diming. This is giving good media expansions that you can pay like $15 for each. That's a good value. Like, that's yeah. fine. If you develop it after the game's done, I have no problem with that. Are it's they just talking more about, things. like, horse armor type of DLC? 
Exactly, yeah, like just smaller things, like, you know, like microtransactions. They're just not a fan of that. That's what they meant, and people are taking it the wrong way, basically. So, Like I'm taking it right now. I say, fuck the man. I'm not paying anything for that DLC. I'm just kidding. That's because you got that modded PS3. You just steal it. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, sir. Jesus, Brett. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. I don't think it'll work, though, with PS4. Damn it. So I, I'm not really too excited about DLC for a game I haven't played yet. I'm excited yeah. to play that fucking game. game. <laughs> Me too, <laughs> yeah. Three looks sick. I can't wait to get my hands on it. That's coming out right around the corner, too, isn't it? A month, yeah, I think a month and like a week. Oh, did you guys yeah. see that gameplay that came out too, like a couple days ago? Holy no, I did mother not. God, it just looks so good. Yeah, I, I'm so excited for it. I, I love you, Robbie. Play. You're awesome, man. <laughs> it just looks incredible. So it really yeah. does. I, I'm down to play that game. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I think that'll be like kind of my summer game. Like once I get finished with Bloodborne, I think that'll be the game I pick up after that. Because it's definitely going to take me another month to get through Bloodborne at the rate I'm going. Well, see, me, I, I'm really excited about it. I think I've never played one or two. And uh, just from all the accolades the game has, has garnered at this point, I know it's an amazing, amazing game, and I'm looking forward to it. But I still got, I haven't even started Dragon Age. That was game of the year last you year. Haven't pay, you haven't started that game yet? I haven't even hit start Oh, man, yet. you're in for a treat. That game is really good. It's and great. And Kate already beat Shadows of Mordor. I haven't even started that one yet. Because Did you at least playing, watch her play it? I was playing Dying Light. Yeah, <laughs> after we beat that game, she went straight to Mordor, and I couldn't stop playing Dying Light. Because I it still was can't so... get Dying Light. Oh, God. Robbie, yeah, I don't know. Wrong? That game just does not pull me in at all. What do you think, Robbie? Dying Light, do you think it's a pretty good game? I really, really liked it, but I could understand if you didn't get into it, Briar. Yeah, I definitely understand that. So, did, did, did you see? Did you see a big difference in the way you felt about the game before and after you got the grappling hook, Robbie? Yes, that grappling hook is pretty awesome. To be fair, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there are certain abilities you get that make it so much better. Really, yeah, yeah. it really does. I, mean, I think I was... just might be like on zombie overload at this point. It's just there's so <laughs> much zombie all the time that like another game. Featuring zombies just doesn't like it doesn't hook me anymore. That's something else we didn't actually talk about. Black Ops Three zombies are coming back too. It was leaked in a uh, retailer. Uh, I'm shocked. So, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Trek zombies are amazing, so I'm sure it'll be good. You know, I never played it in Black Ops or Black Ops Two. Oh, uh, Black Ops Two. You never played it? No, I never did. Where, oh my god! Oh my god! It was so good. I didn't even play this campaign of Black Ops Two until. Like a month before, that's Ghost crazy. Came out. Zombies are incredible <laughs> in those games. Wow. I haven't I played those the games just for multiplayer. I never yeah. played the. Oh, I played the campaign of Ghost briefly, maybe an hour in, and I've never played the campaign of Advanced Warfare. When I play a Call of Duty, it's usually for multiplayer. Yeah, usually. That's what I do. I set that that button up so that the game just defaults to loading the multiplayer, so you don't even have to select it. Yeah. And I never look back really. And, and I can really understand what you're saying about the whole zombie thing, Briar. I think that zombies have been overdone, but mm -hmm. when it's done well, I think it really works. If they made a new Left 4 Dead game, I'd be all over it. It'd be a wrap. I would be so all over it. Yeah. Did you guys ever play that those games, Left 4 Dead? Yeah. yeah. I have Left yeah. 4 Dead 2 on PC. It's a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah, Left 4 Dead was interesting because of like the cooperation that it took. You know? And that was, it was a long time ago now. When did Left 4 Dead 1 come out? Oh, I would yeah. say like 2007? 2007, yeah. 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 So. Seven or eight, somewhere in there. Yeah. That was that was a really fun game. Yeah, it sure was. Amazing stuff. And uh, so what do we got coming next in our news? This is something that I know nothing about because I've never really... Uh, I don't frequent this series, but the Deus Ex... There is... Uh, it's been announced... Deus Ex Mankind Divide has been announced for the PS... And the, if you guys played the Deus Ex series, and if you have, please enlighten me because I'm not, I've not really given it an opportunity. I've never played a Deus Ex game before. I've heard amazing things about Human Revolution, but I'm super excited about this because that franchise has always looked really awesome to me. So I'm pretty excited. I played the mm. first one on PC in the 90s. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my God. It was pretty damn good. <laughs> wow. okay. Well, I mean, uh, I'm always looking forward to new stuff. Um, and if it comes out, you know, and it's a successful game and people are liking it, I'll probably give it a try once I clear out some of this back catalog, guys. I think My it'll be pretty catalog bad. got ridiculous this year. Like, it is so bad this year. 
Yeah. How, how do you guys rate this year so far? I made a video about this year so far. The, I saw that point. video. And I thought it was a. I, I got to agree with you. This has been a strong year. Yeah. Quarter one's been very good so far, and yeah. uh, the fall is packed too. Even there's tons of stuff still coming. So that's I mean, what we thought about last fall, though. And everything got pushed out of yeah. it. Yeah, and, and things are getting delayed to 2016 now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's so. why this year is so strong because every everything got pushed From out last year. Yeah, <laughs> <From> last year. <laughs> but I mean, I mean the that. games that I'm loving right now, Ori and the Blind Forest, I'm still playing. I haven't even got to that new. Uh, Metroidvania game. I can't remember the name of it. Axion Verge. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to uh, getting into that one because I love that type of game. Uh, Dragon Age. I still haven't completed Dragon Age. I mean, I just got so many games. I got an unopened copy of Far Cry 4 sitting right here. Oh my god. <laughs> no, we have to play that. Oh. I that haven't played that fun. either. Wow. wow. It's been sitting here since before Christmas. Like, I just oh haven't gotten god. a chance to open it up. Oh and, my God, bro! What are you doing? The <laughs> thing is, man, we've already had so many good games this year. We know when is Batman coming out? That didn't get pushed out till 2016, did it? No, it's June. No, so. okay, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. That you know, that's going to be insane. That's going to yeah. be an incredible oh game. God. You've got so many good games. E3's coming. You know, something good's going to come did out. Did you guys see that PlayStation push. 4? That Batman branded yeah. PlayStation 4? Oh my God, that thing is Look. awesome. Look Tell at his eyes. I didn't get a little tingle in your in your pants Look. there. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to get that, Briar? What do you think? I already have two PlayStation 4s. I can't, I can't yes, justify yes, buying same that. Here, same here, man. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's good news. I mean, and, and I really do think that uh, 2015 has definitely already been a better year than 2014. Yeah. And, uh, Bloodborne, think, Ori of the Blind Forest. What else have we got this year so I far? I Dying Light. I think that was amazing. Dying Light, yep. Uh, those are my yeah. picks for game of the year. So far. <laughs> I was afraid That's of the mention of all. I was like, "Whoa, stop!" No, I can't. I can't do evolve. Um, but but so far I've had a lot of fun. You know, it's it feels like every week I'm playing something good, and I know it wasn't like that last year. No, it certainly wasn't. Last okay, year so was pretty slow. Here comes some news that a lot of people probably already knew about or have been imagining is going to happen soon. An Uncharted trilogy will be coming to the PS4. It was listed on a Swedish website. And you know how those Swedes are. Wait, Usually. they're going to remake a... They're going to do, like, a trilogy for the PS4? Or yeah, like? the, this is something Colin Moriarty from IG... Well, previously from IGN has been uh, talking about quite a bit lately that he had uh, kind of an inside notion that this is coming and coming soon. Yeah, no shit! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every series is getting redone by Sony right now. Of course they're going to do Uncharted. It's one of the Everything most popular is getting series on the PlayStation. I, I, I think this is much it's smarter like than no God of War 3. Yeah. See, oh, yeah. the God of War 3 thing, ah, I think this is actually a legit and reasonable remake because there are so many people coming from the Xbox ecosystem to the PS4 right now, and they've never had a chance to play Uncharted. You know, they've been hanging on Master Chief's nuts, and now they can finally see what Nathan's are like. And uh, they've <laughs> oh never played, they've never they're played Uncharted game before, <laughs> and so now they <laughs> they're sweatier, they got dirt on them. Uh, and so now they can actually go in and play the trilogy and uh, see what that's like. I think it's a reasonable remake, and I'm pretty excited about it. I think you'll probably see it announced in E3 for sure at the Sony conference. It's definitely coming out this fall in place of Uncharted 4. I think so. I ain't buying it. Are you guys buying it? No. No, nope. I won't buy it. There's three. nothing those games have to offer me in like a new HD format. No. I, they were great. Don't get me wrong. And if you haven't played them, I'd, I'd pick it up because they I were great. It. I just want to see what the price is first. Like we'll see how much it costs, and then I might get it. Yeah. I mean, if they can do it like they did the well, the Resident Evil. I think that Resident Evil remake was unbelievably cheap for that kind of uh, value. Twenty bucks. I know it won't be like that, but I'm thinking maybe a forty dollar value would be reasonable for consumers. For three games, I bet sixty. I bet probably sixty. 60. Yeah. Hmm. And you know they're going to throw all the DLC in there too. So. Yeah, Uncharted Two I think still ranks above. It's the best above. one. Yeah, it's some it's people one of the say best three. Games, I think ever. Some people say three, but they didn't take their medication that day. Two Who says that? Well, lots of people that? argue no. that three is better. Those are people you shouldn't be listening to. You're damn right. <laughs> damn right. They don't three exist. Just exist. ignore them. Yeah. Now, this, if, this you, if your favorite Uncharted game is Uncharted Three, I already know not to. Not Freaking to listen to company. anything you say ever again. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you, you have already made my mind up to never, never regard anything you say as valid. 
<laughs> oh my god, that's kind of harsh, but I know it's too harsh. This this isn't in the news, uh, our news feed today, but I, I do want to get you guys' take on it. You guys into fighting games at all? I know back in the day, Briar, you were like me and, and really into yeah. them. Mortal Kombat X is coming out. I'm actually tempted to pick this up just to see how good it is. It, I, I've been watching kind of like the teasers come out and. Like, Mortal Kombat has a special place in my heart from back in the day, playing it at the arcades. I don't know. It looks like it could be fun. It might be a fun diversion. I could play well, it with my kids, you know. It'd be it's, fun. It's really intimidating to me because, you know, Mortal Kombat 2, 3, even 4. I played that on Nintendo 64. Uh, I mastered, like, everybody's combos. I wonder how many I know. Now I have to learn them all over again, and I'm like, ah, I don't really have the time for that, right? I'm not going to do that. Like, yeah. there's no way I'm going to get good at the, at Mortal Kombat 10, but I wouldn't mind just checking her out, checking her out, playing around with it, you know. Oh, you're talking about the game, right? Yeah. You're saying her. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, rolling her around, seeing how she fits, you know. Wow. <laughs> it's an awesome game. <laughs> this is still all talking about video games, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. I, I'm actually, uh, I've seen, you know, I think they've, uh, kind of confirmed 24 or 25 characters, and among that roster, they got lots of new characters. I'm really excited about that. Uh, I don't mind, you know, having lots of characters from the previous games, but I always want to see something new, and that's something that Tekken yeah, doesn't do too well. Tekken only introduces like three or four people every game, and then everybody else is pretty much the same, and so I can jump yeah. right in and kick everybody's ass because it's, they don't even change moves. Well, Mor but, Mortal Kombat's going to have plenty. They're going to have a green ninja this time, a yellow a ninja, yellow, a blue orange, ninja, a purple, orange, and, a and then yeah, a purple, and a, one. a purple female ninja, a blue like, female ninja, a polka dot ninja. <laughs> Yeah. I'm actually going to play this, and, and hopefully it's... Well, they got Predator in the game. They've announced Jason Voorhees. Yeah. Oh, Can you yeah. imagine that? Can you imagine Jason's fatality? Just take a fatality from one of the movies. I think I, you know, yeah, I, think I could imagine insane. it, frankly. Right <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fucking insane. So. Having seen uh, Friday the 13th, I think I can imagine what his fatality yeah, might be yeah. like. It's going to be yeah. pretty fucking gruesome. So I'm really amped to see that. You know, if, And the thing is, now that when you're playing fighting games, the majority of it's done online. And so it, in some games, it doesn't work well. And so who knows? I mean, I don't, I don't really play Smash Brothers anymore because I can't play it online anymore. Why not? It's, the lag is terrible. Oh, you cannot right. play it. You can't play it. It's really almost unplayable. That's too bad. The Wii U doesn't have an option to plug in a, uh, you know, you can't plug in an Ethernet to the it Wii U. It doesn't have an Ethernet? No, it does not. <laughs> Has yours been in the closet that long, Briar, that you didn't even know? Yeah, it's, it's, he's he pulled it out recently. Yeah, he, 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 he's underneath his shoes and coats in the closet somewhere. There's no Ethernet port, so you really can't get you can't get a reasonable connection. You know that's why I've been wanting to play with nine to five gamers and some of the other guys I know, yeah. uh, and you just can't get a reasonable connection. I play it when my brothers come over, and that's about it. So hopefully they're able to uh, you know get that net code good enough that when you're playing, you don't have that much lag. And I'm hoping that's the case. I can't believe they don't have Ethernet. <laughs> yeah, no Ethernet. It's you. Come on. You know Nintendo's always it's Nintendo. got something. They're way behind. They always are. <laughs> Come on. What do you guys think about uh, Lego Dimensions? Their new... Uh, what do they call these games now? They're like... Lego? Life or... Mm -hmm. Like transitional life games or... What do they call these things? Oh, no, I, I don't know, but I really like a description of, of that term. What, what does that mean? <laughs> Sounds Holy like a hell. date to a psychiatrist or something like that. <laughs> transitional life Don't judge my transitional Lego life. <laughs> Holy hell. <laughs> Inside this body, there's been a little Lego person all along, and he just wants to come out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I, I've never heard of that descriptive term, but... Uh, <laughs> I did see the trailer. I saw the trailer for this game, and it was basically all CG. It really didn't show any game. It was just like the movie, right? Like, it's yeah, Lego it Skylanders. Like Lego That's basically yeah. what this is. Oh, right. really? But, but, like, wouldn't you rather, if you were going to play a Skylanders-type game, wouldn't you rather play it with Legos than fucking yeah. Skylanders? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Or Amiibos, or whatever the fuck else they're doing with it? Yeah. Like, uh, Legos is just like no-brainer. You could build... Imagine if... You could build your own little, like, Lego creation, put it on the little pod on top of your PlayStation or Xbox, and then that gets zapped into the game, and you could play with your creation, your real-life creation, inside the game. That would be tell insane. Me that, tell me that wouldn't be fucking cool. 
It would be you, awesome. Use that the would cameras. Be good. <laughs> that would be that would be really sick. I don't know if that's what it's gonna be, but that'd be amazing if that's what it is. And that's what if you watch that trailer, it kind of looks like that's the direction they're heading in. Did you see how? Who was the actor they had in there? Ah. Uh. And, and I was thinking that right before you asked, and I can't remember his name. I can't remember either. But basically, you know, uh, the Batmobile comes out of the portal. Uh, he, he makes it into a new creation, and then, like, the characters from the Lego movie get in it and drive it back into the portal. It's Ganondorf, Bat- it's Batman, it's some chick. I think she's from the movie, right? The, the girl from the movie, but the live-action actor, I can't remember who it was. But he basically, it doesn't matter, he basically builds something out of the broken Batmobile and then they can use it in the game. That's the implication that I got out of that trailer anyway, and that, to me, is really exciting. That You know, the LEGO games, a lot of people really love those games. I always thought it was a missed opportunity. How are you going to have a LEGO game where you can't it's freaking build things? You know, like, I don't, I don't even get this. Like, why is this even a LEGO game? Yeah. It's just, yeah. To me, it's just a Star Wars game with blocky characters or a Batman game with blocky characters. But... This wow. is an opportunity, and like I think they have the technology to do it with these portals. I don't know how it'll work. Like, will they be able to actually like see what you build in real life with Legos and then scan that in? I don't know. Maybe there will be separate pieces with their own little NFC chip in it, and then it scans each individual piece and just models a character. That's my guess. But. That could be. That could be. Yeah. Or maybe it's like a some kind of like a circular portal that you'll have to like scan Slide stuff through. through. Yeah. I don't know. You know, all that stuff is getting cheaper now. <laughs> okay, what was that? Briar's gonna spend some money. That's what it means. I, I, hey, you know, we got plenty of amiibos in this house. We got plenty of Skylanders in this house. And while I realize that they are like the obnoxious, like money grabbing hook that they are, those fucking things are adorable. I love them. Look, I got a little. <laughs> we don't even have the Disney game, and I got a Groot sitting right here. <laughs> Oh. That's looking awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> like I am not, I am susceptible to this stuff, you know. And uh, the Lego thing, to me, I think it has real potential. I would love to see it done right. Mm. And the Lego games are good. They make good games. I'm wondering now with this whole uh, video game toy mashup that seems to be taking the world by storm, if Microsoft and Sony are going to come up with their own. I don't think Microsoft could. I don't think they have enough valuable characters. You know, they like got Master Chief. Yeah, they got Master Chief. They got, Chief, they got like two or three characters for Microsoft. I think Ori would be great, uh, but PlayStation. I think Sony really could. Sony really does have a long-standing history of incredible video game characters. And I think imagine seeing like Joel or Ellie as like a, a PlayStation type of amiibo, or you know Kratos or Nathan Drake or Sly, or Sly Cooper. Would be a yeah, cool I mean all these crazy characters. Sackboy. People love these characters. I'm really shocked Sony hasn't jumped in. I don't think Microsoft really can at this point uh, because I don't think they have enough characters that people can really stand behind. Uh, but I think Sony definitely could. And I think Lego, it's... Lego, though, has Star Wars. Yeah. They have Lord of the Rings. They have Batman. Batman they yeah. have, you know, all of the DC Universe, basically. Yeah. That... <laughs> yeah, that, I think that, uh, you know, they, they potentially have... Uh, bigger ground to take over this whole thing. And they have the, the idea, right? It's like you could build your creation in real life and then play with it in the game. Boom! That's <laughs> a million seller. What was, that, what was that game? Uh, was it Crash Bandicoot where you could build your own creations? God damn it. Crash, I remember no. that one. Kingdom Hearts where you made no, the no. ships? No, no, no. It, it was like a it was a weird like 3D platformer crossover, but all of a sudden in this new one, it came out for the Xbox 360, I think, uh, and you could build your own creations inside of it. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember what it was, but uh, I, I think this is a. I think this is just a brilliant thing. If they can pull this off, if they can make a good game out of this. If they can actually pull this off, where you build your own things. In real life, scan it into the game, and it's just a no-brainer, like billion seller. You know, <laughs> like, wow. yeah, it's like a no-brainer. It's about time they did this. Yeah, I can see it now. Just Legos all along the wall behind Briar. Like, what is that? A painting? No, it's seven hundred Legos. Nice. <laughs> I uh, I want to actually uh, present this last little bit of news because I 
I love you PC elitists. You know, we're console elitists here, and this is for you PC elitists. The GTA 5 PC port is going to take up seven discs. Isn't that a lot? Way to go, PC. What do you guys think about this news? That's not surprising, right? I mean, it's probably coming out on DVD if you buy it retail copy, but who's really buying it retail copy? I would imagine everybody's going to be downloading this thing. Download on Steam especially, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the reason it's coming out on seven discs is because a lot of people don't have Blu-ray uh, drives in their PC. So they're, yeah. they're putting it out on DVDs, and it's huge, so it takes up a lot of DVDs as opposed to being able to fit on one 9-gigabyte Blu-ray disc, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I only meant that for the for the PC elites that are assholes. For the PC ones that, master race. Uh, they already know their place in dealing with Windows 8. <laughs> they, they've suffered long enough. Well, give them a fucking break. <laughs> hey, <man. laughs> oh, my oh, God. Goodness, man. I have Windows 8 just for your information, Brian Rabbit. And, and I do, too. And he I know that suffering and pain, all right? <laughs> you see the glee in his eyes? <laughs> he knows we have Windows 8. And we suffer daily. <laughs> oh my god. They have suffered oh, long man. enough. <laughs> yes. Yes. Windows 10 is coming. It's your salvation. Yes. All hail Windows 10. All hail oh Windows 10. Oh my god. Well, uh, I think that's the news for the week. Uh, that was a good one. Good... I, that was some good news. Some, uh, pretty fun stuff. I'm really excited. I didn't realize I was excited about that Lego game until we started talking about it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I am gonna build some shit in Lego. I, I'm gonna start building right now. <laughs> you got Legos just sitting around? Is it back there behind R2D2? Yes, yes, sir, I do. <laughs> Holy hell, Briar! <laughs> <laughs> Only Briar would actually pull it out too. Just this right is on. actually my phone stand. This is where I rest my phone when it's not in use. There's like a little. Oh, that's pretty slick. Yeah, the kids made this for me. That's pretty slick. So this is something we didn't even talk about post show. I mean pre show. What are we playing today? I can't I can't play today. <gasps> I forgot <gasps> to tell you guys. I can't play today. Okay. That's not a huge deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. The worst part of the podcast by far. Like I'm glad we did this show today. It was a lot of fun. Uh thank you guys again. Um but if we don't get the live stream, it's not a huge deal, I don't think. So that's kind of just a fun thing we do after. Yeah, we'll get yeah. back to it next week. Yeah, and, and for the guys who are watching, we just want to say thank you all so much for being a part of this. If yeah. you've got any, any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. That's if you've right. got any, any suggestions for games that we should play after the show, like The Last of Us, be sure to leave that in the comments below. Oh, that's right. That's that, not happening. When you reach 50 likes, it's got to happen, Briar. Yes, that's, one, that's not happening. Yeah, that it happens. Is. That, that thing hit 50 likes. Are you kidding me? It yes. did. It did. It's yes, at 54. It Hold on. Let me let me video. let me check. Yeah, go I'm check. sure it is. <laughs> I, I am checking. Thoughts two weeks He's ago. He's gonna go, go delete the video yeah. now. Never. <laughs> 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 you can't prove it. I don't see it. I don't see it's not here. <laughs> oh oh my god. Oh my god. It's 54. Yes. I told you. <laughs> yes. Oh. We got the lights. Oh my god. You've got to plan that date. <laughs> we, we gotta plan that real. day, but but always, guys. If you guys have any suggestions for games you guys would like to see us play for the hour live stream after the, the Beastly Thought Show, leave it in the comments below, and we'll try to get around to that game for you. If you got any questions or comments for any of the co-hosts, leave them, and we'll be happy to answer them. Are there any questions? Speaking of that, I can't read, Robbie. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Briar's checking now. I think. I'm deleting like, oh. likes. I'm. I'm. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you guys thing, speak out. Yeah. You guys speak out loud and tell Briar that The Last of Us is an amazing game and he needs to play it online with the Beastly Thoughts crew. And I have. I have no objection to playing The Last of Us single player online. <laughs> online. We're doing multiplayer. The real deal. The real yeah. deal. You take those mix grenades online and oh my god. <laughs> the people have spoken, Briar. 